This is the first section of chapter 12 on differentiation, and this chapter is about gradients of curves. Now, we should already know what the definition of the gradient is. It's like the slope or steepness. Um, and what we've done at GCSE, it would have been the slope or the steepness of a line. OK, and we would have got that from y equals mx plus c. And the m would have given us the steepness. But what if we've got a curve? So here I've got a curve, a quadratic, and at different points, the steepness or the gradient is different. So, for example, let's look at this point down at the bottom here. If I were to draw a line just touching it, that would be the gradient at this point. If I want to find a gradient at any point, I need to find a tangent. In other words, a line that touches the curve at any point. And if I find the steepness of that line, the gradient of the, that line, that gives me the gradient at that particular point. So if I move that to somewhere else, and let's say I wanted to find the gradient here at this point, then I will draw a tangent, a point, uh, a line that's just touching the curve at that point, and that will give me the gradient at that point. And it's going to change depending on where I'm looking. So if I look here, for example, I try and draw a tangent there, it's just touching the curve at that point, this would be the gradient. So you can see at some points of this curve, the gradient is negative because the tangent slopes downwards. Some places it's quite steep and then it gets less steep, it gets less steep. At the bottom here, the gradient would be zero because the tangent would be horizontal. And then here the, the tangent starts to um, get more and more steep. The gradient gets steeper. So if I went here, for example, and through that line, it's meant to be just touching at that point there. You can see it's it's slight, slightly more steep there. So by drawing a tangent to a graph, a curve at any point, and by finding the gradient of that tangent, we find the gradient of, a, of any curve at that particular point. So unlike a straight line where the gradient was always the same, with a curve here, the gradient changes. Example one, the diagram shows the curve with equation y equals x squared. The tangent t to the curve at the point a 1.1 is shown, so that's the red line here. Um, point a is joined to point p by the chord, that's the blue line. Part a, we want to calculate the gradient of the tangent t. Now, to do that, to calculate any tangent, remember we do, uh, or any gradient, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's from the straight line graphs chapter. I'll put a link at the top so you can have a look at that if you need to earn a reminder. And we want to pick two points as far away as possible. So let's pick this point here and this point here. The point up at the top, this one. Uh, that looks like 3.56 and this point down here is negative 1.5, negative 4. So this will be our y2, x2 and this will be our y1, x1. So we have 6 minus negative 4 over 3.5 minus negative 1.5. Now that becomes 10 over 5, which is 2. So that red line has a gradient of 2. Now in part B, it says calculate the gradient of the chord AP. That's that blue line. When P has, now the coordinates of P are changing. They start at 2, 4. And then each of the coordinates change and they get closer and closer to A. So we're looking at a shorter and shorter line for this chord, right? Now my coordinate here for A, I'm going to use that as my x1, y1. So that will be the second coordinate that I put in here when I work out the gradient. So in the first part of part B, uh, what I have is my um x2 y2 as 2 4 so it'll be 4 minus 1 
over 2 minus 1. So that gives me 3 over 1. I get a gradient of 3. OK, let's look at part 2. So what's changing now is that coordinate there. So now x2 is going to be 2.25, still minus 1, over 1.5 minus 1. That is 1.25 over 0.5, which is 5 over 2, which is 2.5. So now I get a gradient of 2.5. Well, let's move on to the third coordinate that we're given, which is 1.1 and 1.21. So I have 1.21 minus 1 and 1.1 minus 1. That gives us 0.21 over 0.1 and that gives us a value of 2.1 for the gradient can you see each time it's getting smaller and it seems to be getting closer to 2 let's see what happens so the next uh, one that we have is going to be 1.0201 minus 1 over 1.01 minus 1 that leaves us with 0.0201 divided by 0 0.01 effectively times it by 100 and that gives 2.01 for the gradient then for the last point it's different it's saying one plus something one plus something all squared now let's think about this if this is the x-coordinate how do we find a y-coordinate well we take the x-coordinate and we square it that's why it's got this bit here the x-coordinate squared now what this is saying is, okay, let's choose any value we like and use that to work out what the gradient's going to be. All right, so let's see what we get. So this is part five. So it'll be one plus h all squared minus one. So we're working out exactly the same way. And one plus h minus one. Now to work out what the top bit's going to be, we need to expand the brackets. So one plus h all squared, it's going to be 1 plus 2h plus h squared, and then that's going to be minus 1, and the bottom's just going to be 1 plus h minus 1. All right, so what will happen here is that the 1s obviously will go, because you've got 1 minus 1, so that just leaves 2h plus h squared over h, and then if we divide through by h, we're just going to end up with 2 plus h for our gradient then lastly part c it says comment on the relationship between your answers to part a and part b well the answer to part a is the exact gradient so part a is the exact gradient because so we got that basically by picking the coordinates and we know their their whole number values so we've got the exact value for the gradient, whereas each one of these here, we're working at an estimate for the gradient. But notice, as this point P moves closer to A, then our estimate for the gradient gets better. And if we look at part 5 here, can you see that the gradient is 2 plus H, and H is 1 plus something okay and the y coordinate is that one plus something squared so if we make that h small and make this gap really really small what happens well as h ends up going smaller and smaller getting closer and closer to zero you literally end up with two which is the exact value there so let's put that in words so as p gets closer to a the gradient gets closer to two so you should now be able to do exercise 12a on pages 258 to 259 of the textbook.